The Whitby to Loftus Railway opened on the 3rd of December in 1883 and it was just over 16 miles in length. From Boghole Junction by Whitby Station to a connection with the North Eastern Railway at Loftus. The beginning of the route was quite dramatic in itself as it left Whitby Town. It went on the Ascendancy and did a great big horseshoe curve around some rugged hillside and underneath the magnificent Larpole Viaduct. That's an absolute beauty in itself before coming up towards and joining on at the junction at Prospect Hill. The railway was to pass through dramatic terrain and rugged coastal countryside with some amazing sea views. There was also three tunnels along the route, one of which is still in use on the open section of the line in the north, and also five viaducts along this 16 mile line. In this series of railway walks will begin at Whitby, beginning right beside where Westcliff Station once was and some of this still remains, and we'll head on through places such as Sands End, Kettleness, Runswick Bay and on towards just beyond Staves where the original line is still in active use. In part one we'll be taking a look at the route from Whitby through towards Sands End. Quite some beautiful scenery along this way and also the site of four of the five viaducts along the 16 mile entirety of this railway line. Now these are the old station buildings of Westcliff Station. Isn't it fantastic they still survive? And it's known as Beachy Muse. So that's quite appropriate, isn't it? So this is pretty much gonna be the start of our journey. So it isn't a footpath as such. I'm gonna have a wander up just to see what we can see. But this is pretty much our journey off towards Sands End on the Whitby to Loftus Rail. Whitby Westcliff Station opened in December 1883, 15 miles south of Loftus and 21 and a half miles north of Scarborough. There was two platforms, there was actually three of these back in 1930 and the station closed on the 12th of June 1961. Three years after the line to Loftus closed due to services still coming along from Whitby and on towards Scarborough and vice versa. So a little bit further up there is a relic and it's basically a railway bridge in the garden of some apartments. I'm going to turn you about and I'm going to take a little look up there and then we're going to head up. We're going to have to get back on the main road and pick up the route further down. Imagine having that in your back garden. That is beautiful isn't it? Leaving Whitby Westcliff station just up there you then hit the 174 road bridge. Didn't expect to see this still standing. I'm not familiar with any of this area at all, to be honest, uh, north of Whitby. So finding these little relics is just as much a surprise to you as it is to me. And it is fully accessible. You can walk under it. There's like a style kissing gate just down there. So that is the direction to Sands End. And we're going back towards Whitby over that way. So this is really good, isn't it? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven small arch supports going through it but it is completely built of stone no trace of brick whatsoever let's get you through to the other side and we're going to see the sea and the coastal cliffs i believe once we get out of here let me turn you around not bad is it nice little time to reminder i think it's time to go and see what's over there So coming across from the bridge just there, the A174, the track bed shoots across down there. There's a golf course there, look, and Sands End is about two miles over there. There's a viaduct down there as well. I very much doubt there'll be any remains, but it was called Upgang Viaduct. Now standing from Upgang Lane right near the bottom, you can see the embankment right in the centre of shot, look. And then it disappears, and that's where the viaduct was. I think the abutments are still there for the viaducts. I'd be very, very curious to see if I can get the drone over there because I can't be wandering onto a golf course with balls flying around.
The viaducts along the route were manufactured by a company called Skern Ironworks and these were based in Darlington with the cost of them being just over £23,000 for all of them and that is around about £1 million and above in today's money. Upgam Viaduct had a total length of 330 feet and a height of 70 foot and a maximum span of 60 with a girder type that was of a lattice design. So you could just make out over there and like you can see the other abutment for the other half of the viaducts and it would have come all the way across here we've got some foundation bits just here look for where it once stood and the actual abutment is just here so there's a footpath I believe it's, it's well I've just wandered on it's not fenced off it doesn't say private so I've come to have a look I don't know if I'm going to be going up top because I might get moaned at I'm trying not to draw attention but people have spoken to me on the golf course said good morning look at that rickety old bridge going across there I wonder if that is worth a walk over this is beautiful isn't it look at the view We've got the fabulous remains of the northern side of Upgang Viaduct. Isn't it brilliant that this is still here? I'll come over the rickety Indiana Jones style bridge to come and see this. And look at the view, that must have been beautiful. Flying over there, you can just see the other abutment now in centre of shot. And this is what it looks like from down near the bottom, so it would have come flying across here all the way. You could just make out that abutment on the northern side just there. What a magnificent sight this would have been. So next up on our journey towards Sands End, it would have been New Hobeck Viaduct, which must have crossed New Hobeck. It's a smaller viaduct than the one we've just done at our gang lane. I can see the track bed goes on some kind of descent so that's the view I've got looking forward and look at the state of the cliffs on that side you have to wonder how long the railway would have had left eventually with those crumbling sandy looking rock faces can you just make out sand's end in the very center of shot and I can even just see the recently placed railway carriage on the track bed at the former station I'm hoping we get close to that because from here it looks a beauty I don't actually think I've got to the point where New Home Viaduct was. I think it's or was just there because I can still see a sign up there, the same as those that was on the golf course. And it pretty much crosses over where the golf course ends as we go on a descent down towards this little coastal village of Sansen. So, this here, this was the site of New Holmbeck Viaduct. I can just see an abutment just there, a coping stone. And I've got across the other side, there are some concrete remains just over there. I'll probably be able to get closer to them. And Sands End's just out there, so it shows you how close it was to the little village itself, quite close to the sea as well. I'm assuming there's a new home back here. I think I can see a small culvert through there, so it must just be dry at the moment, or is this traces of it here? Look, it will be, won't it? it? Takes me a while to get there, walking on the sand. Yeah, so this will be the new home back deposit itself into the sea wow to have seen this let's go over there and have a little look at that new home viaduct was also 330 foot in length just like upgang but it had a maximum height of 50 foot that's 20 less than upgang and a maximum span of 30 foot that's half of what it was at upgang and it had a girder type that was of the plate design so there you go on the northern side you can see exactly where some of the concrete supports were for this viaduct's new home back. I think I can actually, I can follow it up and get you over to the southern side as well. There we go, look, so there's the remains of the viaduct, the southern end, spanning its way all the way across, ready to hit the next destination of Sands End. I did all right getting up here. I'll tell you what though, if you look over there, 
you wouldn't think it was a track bed or was. Because there's the start of the viaduct just there. But look at this behind this terrain. It's all, you wouldn't think it, would you? It's all a result of landslides and erosion and growth, I suppose. Right, I'm going to stay up top now. Well, I'm going to go down first and then I'm going to follow that path and get onto the A174 because now I want to stay above track bed level as we feed our way down into Sands End. You can just make out the other coping stone lot where the viaduct started, just there. I've just been stood over there at that one. I could just actually come off the road just here, look. It's just right there and we actually stand on the track bed again. There we go. There's the sea down there. You could just make out Sands End pretty much a stone throw away. This is where you might see a man stood just there, a grey man. Around about there, we're going to lose the track bed again. And it's all gone because then it heads off towards what was Sands End Vidals. I'm hoping to find a few remains of that down there. I'll show you pretty much where it crosses where the road is now and where it used to head on towards that. Right about here. There's that man studying shot and it shows you pretty much the trajectory of where the track bed went. about here there used to be a good station just as we approached the village and where the viaduct was it's now a doctor's surgery so it was a good station for freight traffic so i think these houses may have been pretty much built on where the railway once was east road viaduct was the second longest on the entire railway at 528 feet but it was actually the lowest on the entire route at just 30 feet in height there was a maximum span of 60 foot and the girder type on this one was two spans were plate and six spans were of the lattice design. I wonder how many realise it's sat in a cafe or down there on the beach, the colossal wooden structure that was once down here. What a loss. So now it's time to push on. Sands End Station, it had one platform opened in 1883 and lasted until 1963. That would have been your journey if you departed south towards Whitby. Absolutely beautiful. And this is where the colossal wooden structure as Sands End Viaduct first appeared, shooting all the way across there, and you can just make out the roof of the station building over there. That must be very, very high and breathtaking views going over, looking out towards the sea there. Absolutely stunning. Sands End Viaduct was probably the most beautiful of all five of them, but also the shortest at 268 feet. Its height was 53 foot, the maximum span was 36 foot, and its girder type was of a plate design. Such a loss, isn't it, this one? I think it would have looked absolutely beautiful, even today, as something to cycle and walk across. A 
Well, there's some red brick remains down there, which must have been supports from the viaduct coming over just there. And again, I can see abutments over there just below the station building. Incidentally, it does have one platform, as I previously mentioned, and shut in 1958. It's got that railway carriage up there as well. I don't know if you can get anywhere near that. I'd like to think you can, but if not, I'll try and get the drone up instead. Just out here, here is that red brick retaining wall up. Look at that beautiful bridge just there. We're gonna have a look at that in a moment. Yeah, so the vinyl would have been dead ahead of us. Now, interestingly, look at this. This has got to be one of the foundations for one of the stanchions or the pillars, hasn't it? Look at it. Look at that circular shape just there. Now, surely that's not a piece of something. That's a foundation, isn't it? It's got to be. Correct me if I'm wrong. Nothing further across. And you can just make out the retaining wall in centre of shot for the other side of it, right where the bus is now. That's a handy bus, thank you very much. It's a nice little bridge carrying the road above. Just depositing the river into the sea just down there. Curious little brickwork just there as well, isn't it? Curving around. I think that might be a bit slippy to get on. I've got myself under the bridge. I slid down on my heels over there, but I'm all right. Didn't land on my backside or anything. I'm studying Sands End car park, you can just make out the station building. Look at those chimney pots. I'm gonna try and get the drone up there if we can't get any closer. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? What a perfect view, that's what you'd get. Oh, I would so love to stay in this. I've said it about previous ones. But that is a beauty. It's fascinating, wasn't it? And I think we've got the end of the platform just here. Look at that. And the carriage is just down there. So I'm gonna have to show more pictures historically and put the drone up, I think than actually, I can't get over there, it's private, there's people on holiday, and um, it's just rude to do that, isn't it? I like that, I wanna stay in that one. I said that about a couple of us, but I wanna stay in that one. The sights and views from Sands End Station must have been absolutely magnificent. You can take it in today of what it would have looked like whilst waiting for your train to arrive. Opening on the 3rd of December, 1883, and it closed on the 5th of May, 1958, and it only had the single platform. I do hope you've enjoyed this video walking from Whitby 
all the way along the coastline following the Whitby to Loftus Railway as far as Sandzen and Sandzen Station behind me. I'm going to continue on now and head off towards Kettleness and walk where the tunnels went along the coast. So we've got Sandzen Tunnel and Kettleness Tunnel and I shall see you in the very next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.